Right, and I think we are live. Let me know if you can hear me and you can see me okay. And welcome to uh, the solo tutorial and playthrough for Amsterdam, game number two in the Steffenfeld City Collection. Uh, and following hot on the heels of my the, the how to play video, which I released earlier on today. Is it all working? It's all working. Excellent. Yes, so thank you very much for joining me. If you don't know how to play Amsterdam, then I'm not going to be going through all of the rules today. Uh, I have done a how to play video, which is on the channel now. Please head over there, give the video a thumbs up, click like, and the same on this one as well. Today, I'm just going to be explaining how the solo game works. This is the solo game as printed in the rule book. Uh, and we're going to see how we're going to get on. We still play the game over 12 rounds. We're still trying to score as many points as we can. But we have an automated opponent known as Tom, uh, who's going to be playing red. And Tom's going to be doing various things on the board and Tom's going to be trying to score points as well. Now, I have done a practice game of this earlier in the week, and a quick uh, bit of thing from I learned from the first game is when I played it first, Tom scores a huge amount of points at the start of the game and then slows down later on, whereas a human player doesn't score many points at the start of the game, but it really ramps up. If you're talking about games where... At the start of the game, you don't do very much, but then by the end of the game, you're doing a million things. That's exactly what Amsterdam is because it uses the resource cubes. And at the start of the game, you're only going to get one cube. Um, but then, you know, by round 12, I think when I did the practice game, I think I had like 24 cubes or something like that. Um, so we're, we're set up the board. Now, there's a few things about the setup that are different. We populate this board exactly the same. Because we're simulating a two player game today, we only have one district tile chosen uh, and the one that's been chosen at random is the black district so there's going to be extra points at the end of the game for whoever's got the most in here in fact in a two-player game it's five so five points at the end of the game for the player who's got the most control crests in the black district we also use only one of each dock worker on the board in a two-player uh, in the solo game only one of each dock worker i'm using the deluxe components today so they've got pretty little pictures on and you may notice that I've got little red stars or little stars with numbers on. That isn't that doesn't come with the game. That's just to aid me because uh, there is a part of the game where Tom, if he rolls triples, is going to take one of the dock workers. And rather than me keep looking it up in the book which one he takes each time, I've just put these numbers on the space. So that's my own addition to it. Uh, that doesn't come with it. Um, other than that, yeah, we play the game over 12 rounds. I haven't yet chosen my starting card. I haven't yet got my starting resources, uh, but other than that, we're good to go. Tom does not have a player board, as you will notice. Tom does not take cards. I mean, he kind of does. He takes cards away, uh, but he doesn't collect his own cards. Uh, he doesn't have a player board. He does have money. He does collect money, but he's got no money at the start of the game. I'm going to collect Tom's money here on this little space here. Uh, but yeah, he doesn't start with any money. Teeny tiny stars. Yes, they are. They are very, very tiny. Um... Right, so yeah, we've done the start. Uh, the turn order is random. Interestingly enough, uh, unlike a lot of solo games where it says, oh, you go first or Tom goes first, in this game, you actually decide turn order randomly. I'm going second. It doesn't make that much difference because um, you'll, you'll see when Tom takes his turn, he always goes first. Um, but what it does mean is uh, I get first choice of card, um, which is good because Tom's going to take the other one. Now, we do have a camera preset, I believe, here. Uh, so this is the market tile that we've chosen for randomly for round one. It's one of the green ones, but it's three coins for four points and two moves up the canal. Now that is really powerful. That's a really good one. You start the game with one coin. So I think one of my objectives this turn is, and it's quite easy to do, to be honest, is get another two gold and then use that market tile because you start with one gold. That will give me the three. That's a really good tile to start with. Um, but these are the cards. These are the cards um, that have been dealt out. And I'm going to get one of these. And that is going to be my first card that I start the game with. Now, I've been having a quick look at these before we start. And I think I've decided that I want to take this one, which I'm not even going to try and pronounce. If anybody does speak German, let me know what that is. I'm also using the cards with the English text on uh, just to save me having to keep looking up what they do. Although it's fairly obvious. As long as you activate one card from that district, you get a coin. So, yeah. Um, but this is the uh, Geminen Tehus Graken Gordel. Yeah, I don't know what that means. If anybody in the chat can tell me what that translates at, um, I'm interested to know. But I think I'm going to take this one mainly because it costs two black to activate. 
And that means if I start the game with two black cubes, I can play that card. Because I'm a big fan of just being able to play my cards. I mean, this one's really good. Pay gold to get two points. And that one's okay as well, especially if I've got lots of the, the pink districts. But no, I'm going to take this one. So those two get discarded. Now you'll notice that I don't have all of the boards out. I've got the cubes off camera. Um, and I don't, I don't have the big board there to put all of the cards on. I've kind of got the cards down here. Oh, you do speak Dutch. Is it Dutch? I mean, it probably should be Dutch. I assume that was German. So apologies for that. <laughs> yes, it is Dutch. For some reason, I got stuck in my head that it was German. Um, so yeah, let me know what that is in Dutch. Anyway, that's the card I've taken. So that goes below my player board. There you go. First embarrassing mistake of the day. It's a city hall. Thank you very much. Why did I think it was German? I think it's because I was talking about Ulrich earlier on today to somebody else. And I said, oh, yeah, he's, he's German, this and the other. I got that stuck in my head. Anyway, we're going to play 12 rounds. Off we go. First uh, four phases as normal in the first phase. Uh, oh, no, I need to choose my starting cubes. So I'm definitely going to choose two black in round two. Now, as for which cube I take in round one, the, the thing I'm looking at is we're going to get points for the black district. The black district has um, a resource here that costs one black cube. So I'm actually going to take a black cube there. And that's the one I'm going to try and buy. If I can't buy that on round one, if Tom takes control of that district before me on round one, then my master plan is not going to work. But we will find out. Right, so that's the setup done. So 12 rounds, four phases in each round. The first phase, we deal out cards. Now it's always two district cards. And then in a two play game, it is one craftsman and one building. So let's just have a look at what we've got. Now, I did take a card which gives me money for using these district cards, which is actually that one, uh, the Grachton Gordel. So it's the, it's the town hall for that particular district in Amsterdam. I guess that's what it is. Um, now, Tom is first. Tom is on top of the uh, Amstel Canal, so he's taking first. Now, Tom will always take the card with the fewest resources, which is these two. If it's a tie, he always takes district cards first. Uh, and if it was still a tie, I would get to choose. And he always prefers buildings instead of craftsmen. So basically that card is gone and is just discarded. It's simply, I, I just don't get to choose it. I now choose which one card I want and it's going to have to be this one because that combos with the card I've already got, I think. Yeah, so I'm going to take that one. I'd be, si I'd be silly not to. So that goes there. These two get discarded. Right, that's phase one done. Phase two is we roll the dice. So we roll the dice and where am I going to line these up? I think I said I was going to line them up here. Oh, interesting. Right. <laughs> Lots of twos. So here's the thing. Tom now takes his turn and he performs all of his actions. No matter where he is in actual turn order, Tom always goes first. And this happens, if you remember what happens from round eight onwards, the dice are changed. This happens before the dice are changed. So... This is going to be a really unusual first round because we've rolled two, 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 three and four. First of all, if there were any ones for each one, Tom would advance one space on the Amstel Canal. Then for each six, he would take control of a block of buildings based on the color of the dice. He doesn't do anything for twos, threes, fours and fives. But if there's triples, at least a triple, then he's going to take a dock worker. So because we've rolled four twos, what we're going to do is we're going to take the dock worker on space number two. So we can get rid of that. And he immediately delivers the dock worker here and gets nine points. Um, and, and that's it. Remember, you don't get the fast delivery bonus for dock workers. So Tom doesn't have a boat that moves around. It just sort of simulates that he's picked the dock worker up. He's delivered the dock worker. And that's it. I think that's what happens on a triples. If you roll a triplet, take the dock worker. He also gets a gold. The results of the triple dice determine from which dock to take the worker. Uh, and if you roll that again on the next round, nothing happens. So, um, yeah, so he gets a gold. There you go. Uh, where's the gold? There's the gold. Right. Uh, that's pretty much it. But then what you do is you check the market tile. If Tom can afford the market tile, he always uses it. 
if he can't afford the market tile, he gets another gold. And that's it. That's Tom's turn done. Uh, yeah, the dock worker is the new element that isn't in Macau that is in, in this game. Right, let's just line my boat down so that you can see it a bit better. Right, now, now we would adjust the dice if we were from round eight onwards, and then it is my turn. So what am I going to take? Now, I'm usually very greedy, and I like taking dice with big numbers. We don't really have many dice with big numbers, and we need black, although the black is only a two. So I'm considering taking the two because that will allow us to get this out straight away. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to choose the black two and I'm going to take two black resources. There you go. Fill with black resources. And I'm also going to take the brown four and I'm going to take four brown resources. Right. And then we rotate this and I get this and the other big change from Macau to Amsterdam, which is a rule I really like, you can save one cube from one round to the next. Um, I'm not going to save that black cube. I'm actually going to buy uh, this commodity here. So let's make sure I press the right button. Is it that button? Yes, it is that button. So again, these goods were randomly distributed. Uh, I'm going to spend one black cube to basically take control of this block here. Uh, and I get the commodity. Now I can keep that commodity to load onto my barge later on, or I can sell it to the black market and I'm absolutely going to sell it to the black market because that gets me two coins. Uh, and I'm also keeping my coins off my player board so that you can see them more easily. Move them out of the way. Um, that's the black cube spent. But then what we do is we're going to use the market. So three coins gets me four points and get rid of the cat hair. Uh, two spaces up on the Amstel Canal. So we're ahead on the canal already. Fantastic. Um, I haven't got any of the cubes, so that's pretty much it. That, that's, but that's my turn done. Um, then we do the reset, which is very simple. We move to round two, and then we flip the tile over. I worked it out that you can probably play a solo game of this in about 30 minutes, once you know uh, what you're doing. Right, round two, phase one, two district cards. There's another, Grackton Gordel. Okay, let's see what we've got. So, not that I speak Dutch, but I'm going to guess that this is New Market. Uh, this is a tulip seller, maybe. Uh, and this is, it's a palace, maybe of a particular place. Now, we've already taken one of these Black District cards. I don't think I need to take another. Um, I've taken four brown resources for the future. This is actually quite good. This this card here has an end of game ability that you don't get penalty tokens at the end of the game for inactive cards. Oh, the palace at Dam Square. There you go. This one is two points for each of your active craftsmen of the craft that you own the most of. So at the end of the game, if I've got three craftsmen of the same type, is that right? Two points for each active craftsman of the craft that you own the most of. So it could be a maximum of six. So that could be 12 points if you collect six craftsmen of the same type. Unlikely to happen. Um, I think I'm probably going to take this one. I think this is the one I'm going to take. Yeah. So we're going to take, in fact, do I take first? Yeah, I take first because I'm ahead. Uh, in turn order. So yeah, so I take this one and then it doesn't matter which one Tom takes because the rest just get discarded. Yeah, tulip sellers are a type of craftsman. Uh, that's phase one done. Yeah. Phase two. Roll the dice. Let's see if we get something different. Ah, now this is going to be an interesting turn. I don't think Tom's going to do anything at all. You can get quite lucky with the dice in this solo mode. One of the things that I uh, like about this solo mode is that it's fairly low maintenance for the for the Automa, which means I can concentrate on the part of Amsterdam, the game, which I like the best, which is your own puzzle 
the efficiency of taking resources, which cards do you take and everything else. The downside is that sometimes you can get a bit lucky or unlucky with the dice. I've got very lucky with the dice because Tom is actually not going to do anything at all this particular round. Um, and in fact, we're doing Tom first. So there are no ones, there are no sixes, there are no triples. So he doesn't do anything. Can he use the market tile? Yes, he can. So he spends a gold and he gets two points. And that's it. That's Tom's go done. Right, me. I wanted to take the purple, but it's only two and I'm greedy. So I am going to take four black. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to take five oranges. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Right. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. And now we're rotating. So we rotate and we take the four cubes. Right. So what are we going to do with these four cubes? Well, I've already got a plan. Well, I, I did have a plan, but it involves not use. Oh, no, I can use the market. So I'm going to spend three car, three cubes to activate the Grackton Gordel, which goes above my player board. Um, and then I've got one cube left, which I will use. So I'm supposed to place a, uh, an activation, an action marker on it to show that I've used it. Spend the black resource to get a gold and get a point. And then I'm going to use the gold at the market to get two points. Uh, and that's it. I can't really do anything else because I've no more cubes left and we have a we have an empty slot there. So if I don't roll a one next turn, it's the disadvantage with being greedy. And so I'm supposed to have, yeah, you're supposed to put uh, these action markers uh, on your windmill for each card that you play that has a, a an ability that can be used. But we're all done. Right. End of the round. So that moves along. I can keep one resource, but I don't have one resource. That moves on there. The action markers get removed and we go to round three. So switch to fancy cam. Two district cards, two new markets. Uh, a stuff and viva. So something to do with uh, linen or cloth or whatever. Um, right, let's have a look at these. So again, I'm first in turn order. So I get to choose which one of these cards I want. Now, I've already taken a new market card, so I, I don't think I'm interested in either of these. This one is really good for later on. This has a permanent ability. Whenever I move my barge, it's one resource for two spaces. And I've got some oranges and browns coming up. Oh, but this one, this combos the central station. This combos with the card that I've already taken. And it's purple and black. Oh, I think I'm going to take this one just because it combos. So I take that one. That goes here. Tom takes a card, whatever. Doesn't matter. Right. And now we're going to roll the dice. Yeah, I've chosen the blue match because it's Amsterdam today. Plus it was on from earlier and I couldn't be bothered to change it. Ah, right. OK, so Tom's going to be doing some stuff this turn. We got two, four, four, five, and two sixes. And remember, from round eight onwards, those sixes would become ones. But actually, you resolve Tom's turn first before changing the dice. So Tom doesn't have any ones, so he's not moving up on the canal. There are no triplicates, but there are two sixes. So whenever Tom rolls a six, he's going to take control of a district. Wrong button. Sorry, that one. Um, so he's going to take control of a district. The colour of the dice uh, tells you which district he's going to take control of. And within that district, he will always choose the cheapest place. And if it's a tie, uh, he'll choose the one that's adjacent to one of his existing control crests. And if it's still a tie, he goes for the one furthest on the left. So let's resolve the black six. Tom is taking control of one of the blocks in the black district. Uh, and that's this one as well. In fact, I could have bought that one, but I didn't because I keep forgetting that one's there, but this only costs one. So that's the one that he's taking control of. Then if there is a space in the black market for it, he sells it to the black market. If the black market was already full, he would immediately sell the commodity and get the points for it. As it is, it goes there and he chooses to take two money for it. That's the black six resolved. Then we do the, so yeah, then we do the, the orange six. So again, he's going to take control of a uh, place in the orange district. And this is the cheapest one. Yep, so he's going to take control of that one. And this also goes to the black market. And he also gets two coins. This is what I'm saying about Tom. 
Um, Tom gets a good start and he's able to sell lots of things to the black market early, get lots of money. But later on, when the black market's full, he won't get so much. So after Tom's taken his turn, can Tom use the market? Yes, he can. He's got one gold. So he spends the one gold. He gets one point and he moves up two spaces on the Amstel Canal. So he's now on top of me. But now it's my turn. So unfortunately, I haven't rolled a one. That means two things. First, I'm going to get a penalty token this round, but also it means I'm not going to be able to do anything at all this round. So I'm, I'm going to skip a round, which is bad. But there's lots of big numbers here. So what do we want to take? I think I want to take the pink five because I don't have anything in the five section. And it's going to be black. Yeah, we're going to take black six. One, two, three, four five six so that goes in there then we rotate it and then because that section is empty i get a penalty token so penalty token for me that's going to be worth negative points at the end of the game and then i don't get to do anything because i've got no cubes so i can't activate any of my cards i can do absolutely zip i could use the market if i had any money I do not have any money at all. So that is that is a null round for me. We move on to round four. We get a new market tile. And let's get some cards. So a plantage. Uh, another Grackton Gordel. A Brewer. And I'm going to guess that is St. Nicholas's Church which is awesome for me because that gives me the black resource that I can spend. But I'm not going first. Tom has unfortunately sneaked into turn order, but he takes this card because it's the cheapest one. So that's removed, leaving these four to me. Now, I am fully aware that I've been taking really simple cards without any fancy special abilities so far. Do I want to change that up? Is this brewer any good for me? Gain one gold for every five crests you have placed in the city rounded up. I remember, I think Nick got that when I played this multiplayer and he, he got really, really good. It's like one gold every round from the start of the game. But it's going to cost two pink and a brown. And I don't know if I'm going to get those resources. It, uh, yeah, no, I'm probably not. So I'm, I'm tempted by this one, but I've got a lot of black cubes coming in and it's expensive. And I've already got things to do with my other black cubes. So I'm not going to go for this one. Do we go for this one? The problem is I won't be playing this one until quite late on. Have I only taken control of one district? I have. That's not very good. <laughs> um, OK, we're going to take the Brewer. So cards get discarded. Off we go. Phase two. Roll the dice. Let's see what Tom gets this turn. Okay, so we've rolled a one. We haven't done that yet. And we've rolled three twos, but thankfully the two has gone. Uh, in fact, we've rolled four twos again, but we've rolled a brown six. Okay, so Tom's going first. We've rolled one one. So Tom moves ahead on the Amstel Canal. We've rolled a six. It's a brown six. So Tom is going to take control of um, a block in the brown district, which is this one here. And that one or that one is the cheapest, both costing one. So he takes the leftmost one because this is not going to link to anything that he's already got. Takes control of that. Now, here's the here's the situation. He's got a barrel of beer. It's already been sold to the black market. So what happens is he immediately goes onto the appropriate space and he gets the money for it. Where's the beer? There. So he gets four points plus the fast delivery of four. So he gets eight points, putting him on 20. Yes, that's the six. Right, next, market. He's got two gold, so he spends the two gold, gains three points, one, two, three, and one space up on the canal. Right, my go. Okay, so we've got a one, load of twos, and we've got a six. First of all, because I'm greedy, I'm gonna take the six brown. I'm absolutely gonna take the six brown. Now, as far as which other color I take, uh, in order to activate this card, I need the purple in there. And this is the part of the game that I love, is 
setting up your resources for future rounds, choosing which dice to take. Yeah, I remember when I first played Macau, it was fantastic. And it's the same thing here. So I'm going to take two purple and put it in the two. Then we're going to rotate. And now we've got four brown resources. So it's my turn. I can't buy any of these cards. We could take control of something in the brown district. Do we want to do that? And do we want to sell it to the black market to get two gold to do that? Yes, we do. So I am going to use one brown cube to take control of this district here. I'm going to sell the tulips to the black market, black market tulips, get the two gold, spend the two gold to get one, two, three points and move up one space on the canal. I am then going to spend one cube to move one more space up the canal. So remember, if you've seen the how to play video, the moving up the canal is a once per turn action. You can only do it once in the turn, but when you do it, you can move as far as you want. The first space costs one cube. Every other space costs two cubes. So I'm just going to do it the once. I've still got two cubes. I can't use this because I need a black resource for that. What I could have done is instead of selling that to the black market for two coins, I could have sold it for one resource. I could have then used the resource to get a coin and a point, but that wouldn't have given me enough for the market tile. I used a red crest rather than blue. I did. Apologies for that. <laughs> I took control of the district, not Tom. Thank you, chat, for spotting that. I've got two brown cubes left. You cannot take control of more than one district around. I can't move up the Amstel Canal more than once per round. I can save one resource. So the question is, what am I going to do with this? Now, the danger is, if I move out of this harbour, port, hit dock, pier, whatever you want to call it, uh, you can only load goods onto your barge at one of the cranes. So if I move out to here, for example, I can't load. I've got to end up at a crane in order to load. Um, I don't want to lose the resource. But I also can't think of anything else that I can spend it on. So, I mean, rather than wasting it, I could have taken control of a block that cost two resources instead of one. But let's have a look at the dock workers. So the brown dock worker is here or the maroon dock worker. I think it's maroon. Uh, and that one wants to go there. So that's not far away. The green one wants to go over here. The yellow one wants to go up there. The blue one wants to go over here. And the white one wants to go there. So we could go here and totally pick up this white dock worker and hope that we do there. But it really depends. I, I'm not skilled enough to plan ahead and work out what I'm going to take. But I could because I'm about to get next turn four black and two purple. Now, one of them is going to go on there. One of them's going to go on there. One of them's going on there. So I don't actually have that many resources left. I could take control of purple. And purple would be these ceramic tiles. Now, where do the ceramic tiles want to go? They want to go here. So we could go for those. OK, I think I'm going to take a risk and we are going to leave. I'm going to spend that resource. Yeah, I could have, I could have spent these two on moving up the canal rather than saving one. Yeah, no, I'm going to undo that. Change my mind. When I move up the canal, I am going to move one extra space. Now, moving over the bridge gets me two points. Yeah, I've decided not to save one. I do like saving one from one turn to the next. But I've decided to do something different. Right, that's the end of the round. So we move on to round five. We get a new market tile and we get some cards. So two district cards. Bergwallen. And another one that I am not going to try and pronounce. Now, Geneva Brander, if that's how you pronounce it, uh, it's a type of schnapps, I believe. It's somebody who makes a particular type of schnapps. I've not had peach schnapps for a long time. Right. Uh, who's going first? I'm going first. So which one of those do I want to take? Now, these are really nice because they're cheap, but they only get you a point. Uh, a point for a cube. Now, what am I going to get? I'm about to get four black and two purple, most of which is already spoken for. That's no good to me. That that doesn't combo with anything else. So for, for those people in the chat who know, is this a particular 
uh, make of schnapps or is that just the word for schnapps i didn't know if that was a, like a brand name or something like a popular one uh, or if that is actually the translation of, of schnapps uh is that any good that's no real good to me that's no real good to me so it might have to be just one of these as i say in the how to play video sometimes you want to just take a card that's cheap even if you're not planning on playing it because you are limited to five cards below your player board if you ever take a sixth bad things happen so and that's what i'm going to do at this stage i'm actually just going to take a card just so that I can play it and get rid of it, even if I don't actually use it. So we're going to take this. So I am now full. I cannot take another card. Okay, Jennifer is actually the the base for gin. Oh, it's gin. I thought it was schnapps. Hmm. Okay, it's gin. Thank you very much for that. Is that not schnapps then? I don't know. I'm not a big drinker, so... <laughs> yeah, and I am getting the brown, but I'm not getting the brown for another five rounds. So, okay, off we go. We've chosen our cards. Base two, we're going to roll the dice. Let's see what luck brings us today. Okay, no ones. Oh, no ones and no sixes. So, again, we got lucky. Two twos, two threes, a four and a five. So, Tom does nothing. Can Tom use the market? Yes, he can. So, he spends two coins and he gets four points. One, two, three, four. Right, my go, what am I going to take? So, that brown, three, I could have three brown here. And in fact, I need to for this. So we're going to take the three brown. I'm going to put it in there. Then, do we take the purple five? Do I need to combo any other colours up? No, I don't. So I'm going to take purple five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, right, then we rotate, and now look at all these resources. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a black and a purple, and I'm going to activate Central Station. So that goes there, that gives me another windmill token. Um, I am then going to use Central Station, gain one point for each Grachton Gordel district map, which is one point. I am then going to spend two black cubes to activate the town hall for Grafton Gordel. Um, I am then going to spend one black cube uh, to activate that, which gets me a point and a coin. And then, because I've used one or more district maps for that district, I get a coin. Right, I've got one purple cube left. I think that's going to get saved. Or do we move up on the canal? Yeah, again, I'm so tempted to save it. But I don't need it for next round, so we're going to spend it. We're going to... Sp oh, taking control of a district. You can only take control of one district a turn. Yes, I'm going to take control of a district. Silly me, I almost forgot the point of the game. Taking control of a district is a big thing. It's this one. It's the only one I can take control of. Now, do we sell this to the black market or do we load it onto the ship? So what you want to do, and it was exactly the same with Macau, you kind of want to load all of the commodities of the same type on your ship so that when you arrive at the storehouse, you can sell them all and get a million points. But, but I do love a bit of the black market. No, I'm going to load it. I'm going to put it here. So it goes in here in my little house where it can be. And if I want to, I can load it onto my boat because I'm at the crate. So, yeah, we're going to load it straight onto the barge. There we go. Yeah, literally a million points. I'm not I'm not joking. It, it, I think it says in the rule book it's one million points. At least that's what I read this afternoon. Uh, I think we're all done. Apart from the market. Do I want to use the market? Now, the reason for not using the market is these market tiles get better. And they're more expensive. And my money coming in is potentially not going to be great. I mean, that is two for four points. But I'm going to save my money. Yeah, I'm going to save my money. And I'm not going to use the market tile. Right, end of the round. We move on to round six. We get a new market tile. Three for five. And we get some cards. 
So the two district cards this round are that one and Plantage. Uh, another Brewer. Oh, I mean, this is a really good card. Just every single round you can activate it and you get one gold and one point. That's really good, isn't it? Okay, who's first in turn order? I am. So. Mm. Which one of those should I take? Oh, the market tile. I've done the market tile. Yeah, that, that is the new market tile. Um, so the, the top six are green and the next six are blue. So that one, I'm going to close my eyes, but that should be blue. Hopefully it was blue. Right. What are we going to take? What are we going to take? I mean, this is this is really good. These cards that give you bonus points for delivering a specific type of commodity are fantastic if you can get the combo together. I can never seem to get those combos together. I did in one game of Macau and it was brilliant. But based on based on what I'm getting, I think this is the easy choice because I'm about to get five pink next round. And then I can play it and get more money. That one I'm ruling out. That one I'm ruling out. This one is really nice, but it relies on me rolling a grey three this round. So I think we're just going to play it simple. I'm going to take that one. And these get discarded. There's so much opportunity in this game for you to get cool combos that go together. But I'm playing a very conservative game today. I'm, I'm taking simple cards that I know I'm going to be able to activate. Let's put the windmill tokens back on there. Okay, how are we doing? Round six. Let's roll the dice and then we're halfway through. Okay, it's a quick game. Okay, what have we rolled? We've rolled a one, a couple of threes, and three fours. Okay, so at least he's doing something because he's rolled a triple. So first of all, he's rolled one one, which moves him to there, getting him two points. And then we've rolled three fours. So he's taking this dock worker. He gets a gold for that. And he puts the dock worker on there and gets seven points. There you go. Easy peasy. Does he have enough gold to use the market tile? No. So he gets a gold. Right. My go. What am I going to take? Well. Well, 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 indeed. Um, that's all right. That's covered. That's covered. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm going to take four black and four orange. So this space here is very full. Four orange, four black. I'm going to have an awesome round in four turns time. Yeah, so the game does come with big cubes when you've got five of something. But I don't like to use them. I like to stock the resources up so they all fall down. Right, we're going to rotate it carefully. And we've got these. So we've got five orange to use this round. Now, I can't activate any cards. None of my cards require orange. We are definitely buying, uh, taking control of a district. Now, we've already got some ceramics. Are there any ceramics in the orange district? There are not. But the ceramics are going to go here. Is there anything we can deliver on the way? So these are the warehouses. These will take any good. I think that's a new thing for this version. But we've also got this, which I think is silk. Is there any silk in the orange district? Yes, there is. It's here. It's expensive. Again, do we want to use the market tile? Oh. Okay. There's choices this round. I know what I'm going to do is I am going to spend two orange resources. And I am going to take control of this one and I'm going to put one of my own control crest on it um in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover up the cost once the block has been taken that might visually that's not in the rule book but I've just thought of that might visually make it easier to see which ones have gone so I've bought this um bottle of wine I'm selling it there and instead of taking two coins, I'm going to take a resource. And the resource I'm going to take is black. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend the black on here, which gets me a point and a coin. 
And then because I've activated, sorry, because I've used, it's not activating, activating is moving from there to there. Because I've used one or more of those, I get a coin. And I'm going to use that to get a point. And in fact, I think I'm owed a point. I think a couple of turns ago, and somebody might correct me on this, but a couple of turns ago where I did nothing and literally said, I don't have any cubes, I'm skipping a turn. I think I had that in play and I could have used it to get a point. If anybody wants to scrub back and check, it was two rounds ago, I think, but I'm going to give myself an extra point because I think I could have used that. Even though I didn't have any cubes, that doesn't cost a cube. Uh, Andrew is asking which districts he's being scored for majority. This one. It's the black district, which is why I've um, why I've put that there. Right. So I did that and I did that and I did that and I did that. We've still got three orange cubes left. We haven't moved up the canal yet. We have bought a district. So I am definitely spending one cube to move one space up on the canal. That puts me ahead. Um, we've got these ceramics on board. Am I going to be picking up any other ceramics? The other one is here for two purple. No. The other one is here for three pink. Now, next round, I'm going to get five pink. But I'm actually spending that five pink. I've already got plans for my cubes. So do we just set sail? How am I doing with my longest chain? So you, you get points for longest chain in this game. Uh, I'm not, but if I take that one, then I will. Yeah, I'm going to have an awesome round here. <laughs> that round's going to be fantastic. Um, what do we do? What do we do? I'm, I'm really tempted not, not to leave the harbour. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to spend those two and move another space up the canal, getting me four points. Okay, I think that is my go done, unless I want to use the market. Now, I didn't earlier, but I'm tempted to now. It is five points, but I think I'm going to wait. Rightly or wrongly, I think I'm going to wait. I'm not going to buy a thing. Right, we are halfway through the game. Those gone though. We move on to round seven. So this should be a blue market tile. It is. You see, I was right to wait. Five money for 12 points. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? Right, okay. Let's have a look at the cards. Jordan, Bergvollen, uh, a, a cheese maker. See, I can speak Dutch now. And Divag. Okay, so uh, who's first in turn order? I am. Uh, null turn. Only the three black resource card was in play. Just scrub back. I only had the one card. Okay, thank you very much. I will lose the point. I misremembered it. Yeah, thank you to Chrissy and to Natson for going back and, and checking. Right, but I'm ahead in turn order, so I get to choose a card first. So, now then. That's good for delivering beer. I'm not planning on doing that anytime soon. Two of the beer cards have gone, so we're gonna we're gonna forget that one. We've eliminated that one. Gain one gold for each set of three resources of your choice that you spend. That seems really expensive. Spending three resources to get a gold. Yeah, no thanks. Sorry, Mr. Cheesemaker. Now, out of these cards. It's going to be this one. We're going to take another Berg Wallum. There you go. And then Tom takes one and we're all done. Right. Okay. I've <laughs> not delivered anything. See, the game comes with this faster delivery bonus. There is probably a strategy in this game to grab a good. I mean, to be honest, I don't know how you deliver a good on round one. On round one, you are very likely to have one cube maybe a maximum of three. So the only way that I can think of is if a furniture was on a one space and you bought the furniture, you then moved two and delivered it to there and delivered that furniture, you'd get the fast delivery bonus. I think that is the only way in the game that you can get the fast delivery bonus and it needs all of those planets to align together. 
Anyway, let's roll some dice. So it is technically possible. I can't see anybody ever doing it. Okay, we have got no ones. We have a two. We have three threes. So unfortunately, Tom is picking up another dock worker. And we have a five and a six. So first of all, are there any ones? No. But there are three threes, which means this dock worker has been picked up, collected, and dropped off for points. So five points there and a coin. Does he have the coins needed to activate the market tile? No, he doesn't. So he gets another coin. He's got four coins. Three of the dock workers have gone. Right. Then he's got a six. So I shouldn't have done the market tile yet. He's got a six. Um, the six means he takes control of Pink District. The cheapest space is this one. So he takes control of that. Uh, it's already in the black market, so he delivers it immediately and he gets six points plus one for the fast delivery bonus. Seven points. Four, five, six, seven. Right. Then does he use the market? No, so he gets a gold. Right. OK, we're sorted. That's him done. My go, I am going to take... Oh, there's no fours. No fours. Right, I'm going to take the brown five and the pink six. So brown five... Pink six. This is my last chance to take sixes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, there we go. Brown five, pink six. Rotator Roonies. This is what I have to spend this round. Okay. Uh, can't you deliver any good straight two spaces ahead? Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. Sorry, I didn't spot that. <laughs> One, two, any good can go there. There you go. Well spotted. Thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, and Elliot is saying he's pretty sure that happened in the playthrough I did with three players. It did it. That would have been Nick then, probably. Sneaking in and delivering his goods early. Right, my go. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to activate that. Sorry, I'm going to use that. I get a point. That's the easy one. Can we buy, can we do that? Can we do the thing again? I think we can. But before that, I need to be activating these cards. I absolutely need to be activating these cards. So, first of all, we're going to spend a brown cube to activate Bergvollen. I will be adjusting my pronunciation of these cards over the course of the playthrough, just so you know. Um, I'm then going to activate this Brewer. Two pink and a brown. It's going to go there. I'm running out of space. Um, how many districts do we in control of? One, two, three, four. Yeah, so I'm going to have a fifth one. It's going to be one gold anyway, no matter what. So I'm going to put that on there to get a gold. I don't have a black cube. I do have a brown. Now, ceramics. Where are the ceramics? Ceramics there for three pink. So I could totally buy that. Oh, that'd be really good. That'd be two ceramics on the ship. But I also want to get this out. But I think I'm okay. So my options are buy the ceramics. It's not in the black district, though. But it's all right. I'm going to buy stuff in the black district next time. Buy the ceramics, load them onto the ship because the ship is still here. Or buy a cheaper good, sell it to the black market because they still want cheese, coffee, silk and ceramics, but they want ceramics. And then get the black and the black would allow me to activate that and that and I'd get one point and two coins and then I'm probably going to buy 12 points. Oh, decisions, decisions, decisions. Yeah, I'm going to do it. So I'm going to spend two pink. I'm going to buy this ceramics over here. And I'm going to sell it to the black market in exchange for one of your finest black goods, which I then use at the Grecton Gordel to get uh, a point and a coin. And then because I've used one or more district maps of that, I get another coin. So that's those used. I do have a brown if I wanted to use it for that. Um... So I've got a pink and a brown left. Sure. 
I will spend the pink to move up the canal and I will spend the brown on here to get a point. That's it. Spent all my resources. Now, I am going to spend five money to buy 12 points. Done. Yeah, I think I think that's it. I'm I'm really not doing much of this in this game. I'm doing other stuff instead. Yeah, if I got this ceramics here, it would expand my chain. But... Mm, okay. No, I think we're good. Yeah, we're good. Made me decision. Right, end of the round. So that was round seven. Pass delivery bonuses are over. And all sixes now become ones. We get a new market tile. It's four for eight. So these market tiles are seeded. The green ones are first, followed by the blue ones. Blue ones tend to be more expensive. Okay, Glass Blazer has an interesting ability. It means that you don't have to take a card in round one. Now, this round, I'm going first, so I get to choose my card first. We're about to get six black. So I'm not sure any of these are actually that good. If your barge has returned to the starting period at the end of the game. Now, this is interesting. <laughs> if your barge has returned to the starting pier, that makes it sound like I have to leave the starting pier and come back. I think, and I will ask Queen Games afterwards, but I think that means if your barge is at the starting pier at the end of the game, you get eight points. I don't have to have left and come back. Which is an odd game. If, if I can play the whole game and not actually leave, that'd be brilliant. Anyway, which of these do I want to take? Um, I mean, that's a that's a potential, a potential eight points there. We could go for that. That's probably the better card. Oh, that card is mentioned in a thread on BGG. Excellent, Andrew. If yeah, check the appendix. Uh, to be honest, I think I don't think the appendix says, uh, but if it's been asked on BGG then yeah let let me know <laughs> let me know what the bgg thread says i think the uh i think the appendix and every card is described in the appendix but i don't think it says if it said then there wouldn't be a question on bgg yeah the appendix doesn't say the appendix is basically there if you don't have the cards with text on um so which one of those are we going to take i i think we're going to take this one it's a little risky well it's not risky we just might not do it, but I'm going to get rid of these. Okay, let's roll the dice for round eight. There you go. So remember, sixes become ones, but not before we do Tom's turn. We do Tom's turn first, and then the sixes become ones. So Tom has rolled a one, so he moves to there. Then he's got a black six and an orange six. So... Is taking control of two districts. First of all, the black six is going to take control of here because it's the cheapest. Yeah, so he takes control of that uh, and it's cheese. Cheese is not in the black market, so he puts it in the black market and he gets two coins. Then he's taking control of orange. The cheapest one in orange is either here or here. So he places it next to one of his existing crests, which is here, and then leftmost is the other one. So that goes there. This is already in the black market, so it has to be sold, and it gets sold immediately up there for eight points, no fast delivery bonus. Eight. Okay, that's it. No triples. Tom's turn is done. Now we turn the sixes to ones. Right, and now I have to choose what I want. Now, I need threes, otherwise I'm going to get a penalty. So I'm totally taking three brown. Definitely doing that. As for what else I take, it's probably going to be two pink. Let's take two pink. Oh, look at this. This is silly. <laughs> right. OK, then we're rotating. Yeah, so it's round nine that I'm going to have my awesome turn. So here we go. We've got five. We've got six black to spend. 
Right, my turn. Is this a beat your own score game? Says Mike. It's not, but I kind of play it like that. The objective is to beat Tom, but um, ir irrespective of what Tom's score is, because I find Tom's scoring can be a little bit swingy and a bit random based on the result of the die. So I'm trying to get the best score I can get. For me, the enjoyable factor of Amsterdam, as I mentioned at the start, is solving the puzzle, working out the efficiency of your actions and doing all of this stuff. Uh, and I will make a note of my score. I think I scored 140 the last time I played. Um, I should have taken a photo. I think I wrote it down on Slack. Um, but yeah, okay, so there's no official ruling yet. I will get an official ruling for you, Andrew. I will find out, I will email the people at Queen Games and Mr. Feld himself, and I will ask the question. Personally, I know, I think I know what the answer is, is that you don't have to have left because otherwise there's no way of tracking it. Um, just from a game design point of view. Anyway, we've got these black cubes. Now, we definitely want to take control of a district in the black area because that's going to be worth extra points at the end of the game. But this is all a bit rubbish. Ah, no, we need that one. We need that one to link these three up. So we're going to spend three black. We are going to take control of that district. We cannot sell the wine at the black market. So we will put it in here. And because our ship is still there, we can load it straight on. And we put a control crest here. So that's good. That straight away linked those three blocks up. That's nine points already at the end of the game. If I can get there, that's another six. No, hang on a minute. One, two, three, four. Got 12 points here at the end of the game already. Nice. Anyway, we've got three black left. I'm totally spending one of it on there. Uh, that gets me one gold oh i think we forgot to do tom's market tile we did sorry one two three four four gold for eight points apologies if you've been shouting at the chat nobody mentioned it hey i spotted something before the chat did yeah tom should have used the market tile on his turn uh now because i've used the thing i get a gold and then because i've got that i get a point right next we've got two black left we haven't moved up the canal yet uh, we've used those three, so we totally could start sailing off. Do we want to start sailing off? Hmm. Oh, do we wait? When am I going to get the three pink? Am I going to get three pink next turn? No, I'm going to get two pink next turn, so I can't buy that. Hmm. I'm going to get loads of black next turn, so I'm probably going to buy that or that. It's probably going to be that. Where does the wine get delivered to? There. So that's actually quite easy to get to. One, two, three. It's only four spaces away. I think that's what I might do next turn, because that's a great space for three reasons. It's wine. I already have wine. He's in the black district. Black district is worth points at the end of the game. And it increases the size of my largest contiguous group. Oh, is Ulrich in the chat? Ulrich's here. Excellent. Oh, thank you very much for Ulrich for joining in. Um, yeah, the question is on the on card 107. I know you've got all the cards memorized. Uh, card 107. It's this one. If it's going to focus. Um, so it says, if your barge has returned to the start pier at the end of the game, gain eight points. And the question is, as Willem says, what happens if you don't leave the pier? Do you have to have left and come back? Right. So I've got two black cubes left and I'm deciding what to do with them. And I am thinking that I'm going to move one space up the canal and then I'm going to save the other one. That's what we're going to do. We're going to save a cube and we're going to move one space up the canal. Right. That is my turn. Oh, and I haven't used this. It's not my turn over. I'm going to use the brewer. How many crests have we got? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six crests, which means I get two gold, which means I can use this. Do we want to use this? Yes, I do. So I'm going to spend four gold to get eight points. 36 to 44. 
Okay, I get the eight points. So yes, so there needs to be some slight errata or rewording on this card. It's if your barge is at the start pier at the end of the game, not has returned to. Thank you for clarifying that. Uh, and Andrew, if you want to go and post that on the BGG thread, um, the answer is official, all Rick has said. We're done, end of the round. We go to round nine, we get a new market tile and we get some more cards. Okay, what fancy cards have we got here? So we have another brewer, pay one gold, advance your barge up to three spaces without spending resources. That's gonna be nice for me. Have you noticed I haven't taken a single gray resource in the entire game? Or this one, the Mudaput. Gain one gold or gain two gold if you have at least one active Montalban storeroom. I don't have one of those. So that's basically gain one gold. Um, which of these do I take? I'm still ahead in turn order, so I get a choice first. Uh, now, I am going to get two pink this turn, so I could play the safe route. I could just take this and play it. Could do. I can't play that and I can't play that. I've no grey resources at all. I think I'm going to have to take this one. The downside of this playthrough today is that I'm taking quite boring cards. I'm not taking cards with the um, with the cool special abilities just because I'm playing it really safe. Um, so. I think we're rolling dice time. Yes, we are rolling dice. Okay, so we've rolled a couple of ones, a couple of twos, and a couple of fives. So this, again, we got lucky this round. All Tom does is he moves two spaces on the canal, gets four points. No triples, no sixes. So that's Tom's go over. Now, before I take my turn, before I choose my dice, sixes and fives become ones. So those become ones. And now what am I going to take? Look at this rubbish. <laughs> Look at this absolute pile of junk. Um, let's take two black. And let's take two pink. Right, done. Then we rotate. And now the moment you've been waiting for for the last 30 minutes is... Paul gets to take the longest turn ever in the history of all games of Amsterdam. Because look at all these cubes. And I add in the one that I save from one round to the next. So this is my cubes that I've got to spend this turn. Wow. Right. First things first. I'm going to use that. I gain one gold. And I gain a point. Then, because I've used one of those cards, I, I use that to get a gold. And then I use that to get a point. Right. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to activate that, which gets me two gold. Uh, I forgot to do Tom's market. Sorry, at the end of Tom's turn, he couldn't use the market, so he gets a gold. Has the chat spotted that? Oh, apparently I forgot to give myself a point for that last turn. Okay, thank you. I'll add the point on. I trust you. Uh, right, so we've used that, we've used that, we've used that. I've used these three cards. I haven't used this one yet. And we've got all of these to activate. So, here we go. This is the big round for activating of cards. Two purple cubes goes to activating that. We're going to need more space. Uh, we can fit it on here. Yep, yeah, we can fit it on here. Okay, so that's that one. Two pink cubes to activate this one. Two brown cubes to activate this one. Two purple and two black to activate this one. Told you it was going to be a big round. And look at all these cubes left. Right, we've still got cubes left. I'm going to use the market tile now before I forget. One, two, three, four. Because unlike Tom, I can use it at any point in my turn, as long as I just use it once. I get six points. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
and one space up the canal, which gets me another six points. Right. So, we still have things to do. I can still spend cubes to get gold, and it's probably worthwhile. So we're going to spend a purple cube to get a coin. We are going to spend a brown cube to get a coin. That's it. Okay. Put by one of those activation tokens, you took one for the end game card. Okay, thank you. So I should have two cards that are not used, and I've got two. Yeah, okay, we're all good. Right, now then. Unfortunately, I spent my black cube, when, which I needed to buy that. But I needed to do that in order to do that. Oh, decisions, decisions. How do I get another black cube? Hmm. Okay. I think we're going to go a sailing. I think this is the round where we need to start dropping stuff off. Or do I just move very, very far up the canal and play a very unusual game? Um... And, and stay here and just be greedy to try and get the other the other wine. I don't think I do. And I've not done anything with dock workers in this game. Just because of the way that I've chosen to play and the way the cards have come out. Is there anything else? That, have I taken control of a district this turn? No, I haven't. That's what I'm about to do. I've got three brown. It would if I if I take control of that one, that links up this big chain here. Do we want these tulips? They're going all the way over there. So, no, I don't really want them. But actually, it's worth buying. So I spend three brown. We take control of this district. And I put the tulips on here. And then I can load them onto my barge. Yeah, I could have sold something to the market to get a cube. But you have to. You can only sell to the market immediately when you buy a, a get a commodity. And you can only do that once per turn. So I couldn't have got the three black to then do it. I just need to have three black next turn. So I'm going to save one. If I save one black cube from this turn to the next, I will have three black next turn, which means I can take control of either that or that. The question now is, do we want to leave the starting pier or not? And I'm going to say not. I'm going to spend these five cubes to move three spaces up the canal. Right. We're done. End of the round. That moves to there. That moves on. We are on round 10. We get a new market tile and we get some more cards. I'm going to slightly overlap them because we're running out of space. We've got another tulip seller. Getting one point for each dock worker in the magazine. Doesn't matter whose they are. And that's end of game. That's the card that I was um, cheating with when we did the multiplayer playthrough. I thought it was every round. And it wasn't. It's end of the game. One point for each dock worker in the magazine, which at the moment is three. This is a bonus for when you deliver cheese. So that's no good for me. So based on everything that's here. OK, so that's a, that's a two point card. That's a three point card if I buy it. And I don't have any purple cubes coming up, though. Am I going to get a purple cube at some point? between now and the end of the game. I probably am. So I think I'm actually going to take it. Yeah, I'm going to take this one. There you go. But those cards get discarded. Right, time to roll some dice. Okay, so we've got six, we've got a one, and we've got three fours. So he's at it again. First of all, the one. He moves one space up the canal. Then three fours, which means... Oh, it's already gone. That dock worker is already gone. So it's just a brown six. So he takes control of brown district, which is... Where's the brown district? Here. So there's a three, there's a two, and there's a three. So it's the cheapest one. Can it go to the black market? No. So it gets delivered here. It gets four points. One, two, three, four. 
Um, that's it. Yep, and then can he use the market? It costs five. He can't use the market. He's only got three coins, so he gets a coin. Right, my go. The six, uh, every sixes, fives, and fours become ones. So all of these become ones. And we have five ones and a two. Now, I'm going to need a purple and a black at some point. So I think... I'm going to take the grey two because I've not taken grey cubes yet the entire game. But I think I'm going to take the purple now. Right, and then we rotate. And now I get these resources. And to those, I add the black one from the previous round. Oh, this doesn't work. This doesn't work because I needed them now. Okay, don't worry about it. We'll get them later. Oh, actually, yeah, this isn't working because of that and that and that. Oh! Oh, there's so many crunchy decisions. I was about to spend the purple and the black for this. But then I realised I needed three black to buy that. But if I use the three black to buy that, I can't use these two cards. So, I mean, I will be able to play that on the last round. I could just take purple and black and play the card. So that, that's fine. I'm not in any danger of not being able to activate the card. Taking control of another block is three points, but it's going to get me joy. I've got to do it. I've got to do it. I'm going to spend three black. We're going to take control of this block. And I'm going to take the wine. And because I still haven't left home, I'm going to load that wine onto my barge. My barge is starting to sink low in the, in the water table because it's filled with tulips, bottles of wine, and some ceramics. Right. So I can't use that card. I can use that, which is a point. But I can't use that. I can't use that. Now, we've still got these. So, and I've still got two pink. But I, I'm going to activate that later. So I'm going to spend one pink on there to get a gold. I'm going to spend one brown on there to get another gold. I'm going to use the market tile. One, two, three, four, five. I said they get better. To get 11 points... And one resource of my choice. Oh, hello. I didn't see that. Did anybody spe spot that? <laughs> um, I get a resource of my choice. Totally taking black. And now I spend the black. Uh, and I get a gold and a point. And then because I used the Grafton Gordel, I get a gold. Right. We still have four resources. We have taken control of a block. We have not moved my boat yet. And I think it might be time to move the boat. If I don't move the boat this turn, I'm unlikely to get back in time after delivering all of this stuff. In fact, I might not get back in time anyway. Um, I mean, I haven't moved up the canal yet this turn, so I probably want to do that. Oh, and I haven't used that. Let's, let's, let's use that. How many crests have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's two gold, two gold. I probably should have got two gold from that last time. Yeah, go to the five point warehouse. There is a five point warehouse here, but it's not on the way to here. And I, I want to go here to drop off the two wine. And once you go here, you've got to come out again. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm tempted to move up the canal. I'm also tempted to spend the purple to get another gold. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that. I'm going to spend the purple to get another gold because I want to activate the market tiles for the next two rounds. So still not left home. But I think this might be the round that I do it. I know I keep threatening that. I'm going to save a pink. 
I'm going to spend one brown to move up the canal, which gets me eight points, putting me in the lead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to spend this to leave. There you go. I've answered my critics. I have left home on round 10. I have moved one space. That's it. That's the end of the round. Okay, so we move to round 11. We get the penultimate market tile. Um, I've saved a resource. So let's have a look at some cards. Two points for each different active craftsman. So that will net me four points because I've got a brewer and that's a tulip seller. Or this one, whenever you deliver a commodity, gain one golden. So I'm going to be delivering a lot of commodities. But the question is, which of these cards am I going to be able to play before the game is over? And that is the big question. Because at this stage in the game, that is way too risky for me. Um, that is actually a four point card that I will be able to play by the end of the game. I think. I think. Oh, maybe not. It's a little risky. I might not be able to play that because I've already got this one. So th this is my last turn. I choose purple and black and I take it. So I'm going to have to take, I'm going to have to go play it safe. I'm going to take that one. Right, okay. Dice time. So only ones and twos are valid, but, oh, look at this. But before that, we take Tom's turn. So Tom has rolled a two, two threes, a five and two sixes. So he's got two sixes, which means he's taking control of brown and gray. So brown, what's left in brown? There's a three here and there's a three here. That is adjacent to one of his existing tiles. That is adjacent to one of his existing tiles. So he goes for the leftmost one, which is that one. In fact, that one's actually better for him. Um, it is a barrel of beer. So it goes there and he gets three points. One, two, three. And he's taking control of grey, which is here. Nobody's been into grey at all. So he goes for that one because it's worth one. Um, and he sells it there and he gets two gold. And then he uses the market tile. He spends his three gold. He gets five points. Uh, he doesn't get the resource. So Tom does not get any other benefits of the market tiles other than the points and moving up on the canal. Right. And then the two stays a two. Everything else turns into a one. Right. So what am I going to take? Well, I'm definitely taking the purple two. As far as the one, I'm probably going to take black. Why wouldn't I take black? That then rotates. Penultimate turn. I get these resources. I add that. Okay, what are we going to do? First thing is, I'm going to use the market. So I get, I spend three. I get five points. And I get a resource of my choice. Oh, I should be taking these tokens off. Okay, what resource do I want? Let's take another... It doesn't really matter. Let's take another black. Because. Oh no, I haven't got the purple. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Okay, so. Oh, oh it might do actually. Yeah, it might do. Right, hang on. I'm owed a resource. What do we want to take? Because I can take control of one of these, but I can't take control of that. What's going to get me the most points? Have I got three orange? No. Uh, three brown. I've got three brown. So I could take control of that, and that actually increases my thing. Or two, yeah. Okay, so that's probably the one we're going to take control of which is brown, and I don't need brown for anything else. So we'll take a black. Right, I'm taking control, taking possession of a block. It's going to be that one. I've got some cheese. 
I cannot load the cheese straight onto my port because I'm currently at sea or sailing around in the harbour. Right, spending that black there, I get a gold, I get a point, I then activate that to get another gold, I then activate that to get another point, I then activate that. How many crests have we got now? Well, it's easy to count because I've got, I've got six left, so I've got nine on the board, which is two gold. I've got so much gold. Um, what else do we want to do? Yeah, I don't think we need any more gold now. I should be now spending my resources to go and start deliver stuff. Because we're all right for that. We're all right for that. We're all right for that. Okay. So I'm going to spend one resource to go here. Uh, I wave at the people. But I do nothing. Oh, no, I can load the cheese on. Is it a crane? No, it's not a crane. Can't load the cheese on. I then spend two other resources. The wind has picked up outside and the rain, if you can hear it. Um to go there and then there. And finally, on round 11, we deliver some goods. So this game is all about delivering goods, believe it or not. I get eight points. What district am I getting this turn? Done it. Bought that one. And that is linked to all of my other ones. So that's good. Right, now I've got three cubes left. Do we want to try and get home or do we, want to, do we want to deliver the tulips for six points? Or could we do both? Do we start going really greedy? I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get home. Let's just work it out. Next turn, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to have 10 cubes next turn. Five of them are going to be here. That gives me five cubes to go one, two, three, four, five. No, I'm short. So if I end up here, I need to say I'm two cubes short. But it all depends what's on the market tile. Yeah, so I'm faced with the decision of going all the way over there to deliver the tulips for six points. But if I do that, I won't get back here. So I think my best move is, and I don't really want to move up the canal because it's going to cost me a lot of resources just to get, although that's 10 points. 10 points is an awful lot of points. Hmm. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to spend one of these cubes to move to there. We're going to spend one of these cubes to move to there. Ten points is more than eight. So let's forget this eight point card. And let's just get ten points instead. In which case, I am going to go that way. And I'm going to save this one cube for next round. OK, I think that's what I'm doing. Yeah, the other option is that I could have delivered to here for three points. But actually, I think that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to try and get to the end of the canal. We will see. We will see what happens. I think I've done my entire turn. We're all good. I've saved a cube. We are moving on to round 12. OK, so the final market tile. There you go. Look at that. Perfect. The final two district cards. Oh, and I hadn't thought about this. I have to take one of these cards. So I need to take the one which is the cheapest to play. Yeah, I'm, I'm literally just going to take that. I'm not even going to bother looking at the rest of them because I just need to take the card that I can play for the least cost. And now we're going to roll the dice. Final round of the game. He's rolled a six. He's rolled a one. So he moves one space on the canal, which gets him six points. He takes control of black six. There's no triplicates. So he's taking control of 
the only remaining black district. Uh, it's furniture. He delivers the furniture there to get three points. One, two, three. Right. Then all of these dice become ones. Yeah, could deliver everything, potentially. Uh, so I basically take any two resources that I want uh, and I add them to the black. So I'm not sure it matters. I'm going to take a black and I'm going to take a brown. Okay, my last turn of the game, I am going to spend a purple to activate that, a pink to activate that, because if I don't, I'm going to get penalty tokens. Two pink to activate that. And then a purple and a black to activate that. Right. Then I am going to spend four money at the market. Oh, did Tom use the market? Tom didn't use the market, so Tom should have got a gold. Apologies, I might have forgotten. No, I think I did that. Yeah, I think I did that for Tom. Or did I do that for Tom? I'm not sure. If anybody does want to go back and check... I know I didn't do Tom's market in round 12, which means he gets a gold. But if I didn't do Tom's market in 11, then he should have actually got five points. So apologies for that. I might have I might have got that wrong. Anyway, Tom couldn't do the market in round 12 because he only had three coins. So he gets a coin. But me, I've spent my four. I get four points. One, two, three, four. And I move two spaces up the canal. And then I'm going to spend any one cube to move to there to get 10 points. So 109. And then we've got four cubes left. And I go one, two. Deliver the tulips. Six points. And then I've got two cubes left. I move down to here, down to here. This is a warehouse. I can deliver any one commodity for five points. There you go. Delivered all the commodities. Still got some cheese on board. Uh, still got some cheese sat in my uh, my back back room next to the board game collection. But we delivered everything that we had on the boat. We've got to the end of the canal and I've activated all of my cards. Okay, I did do it in round 11. Thank you. So yeah, that's, that's it. Right then, end of game scoring. So we do the end of game scoring for the districts um, as normal. So I've got a very large connected group. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's insane. That's 24 points. 24 points. Tom has got a group. There's two there. That's on its own. I think it's this one. It's one, two. Oh, no, that's not connected to that. It looked like it was, but it's not. So it's that one, that one. It's not connected to that. I think Tom's done really bad with his district placement. Bad Tom. You've only got two together. Yeah, he didn't roll that many sixes. Certainly a lot less than in the last game. So he only gets six points. Um, did, he, did I use any of my buildings in round 12? I, 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 I'm not sure I did. I mean, I, I probably should have used that to get two gold. Um, and I probably should have used that to get a point. Thank you. I got all excited and spent all of my stuff. Um, but I didn't I didn't have the resources to spend for anything else. So, yeah. Right. What's next? End of game cards. I've got one point for each dock worker in the magazine. One, two, three. I've also got eight points if I go back, if I'm back home. I don't get the eight points for that. That's my end of game scoring there. You th Tom then gets uh, oh the district tile. Um, we've basically we've both got three, so I've got three in there. Tom's got three in there. So I believe you split it and round up. Let me just double check that if it's a tie for the district tile. Um, divide the total equally, rounding down. OK, so we get two points each. <laughs> Equal control of the black district at the end of the game. Um, and then, yeah, end of game scoring for stuff that you've got left over. It's basically Tom gets uh, one point for every two gold that he's got. 
Um, and I think that's it. So he's got four gold. He gets two points. I've got one commodity. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, which is three points. But I have one penalty token, which is minus three points. And I think that's it. I think that is the final scores of the game. So I won and I managed to score 150. Uh, Tom scored 99. Now, the last time I played, Tom scored 165 because Tom rolled lots of sixes. And if Tom rolls lots of sixes, he's going to score higher. And whilst I mentioned earlier on that this is not a beat your own score game officially, I view it as kind of a beat your own score. Tom's score for me is irrelevant. It's how many points can I get in the limited amount of time. Last time I played, I think I scored 140. This time I played, I scored 150. So as far as I'm concerned, I 150 is what I'm going to write down. That is my best score at the game when playing solo. What Tom does score-wise, I'm, I'm not bothered about. Officially, it is you've got to beat Tom. But as I say, the way I'm playing it is ju I'm just trying to score as many points as I can. What Tom does is Tom will be taking things from here uh, that you might not uh, that you might want yourself and sometimes he might sneak ahead of you on that. Tom might be delivering resources that you were going to deliver. Um, and if Tom gets ahead of you in turn order, which he did in my last game because he rolled lots of ones, um, Tom's going to be stealing a card from the display each turn before you take a card. Um, yeah, teeny Tom is really sad, but I'm very happy. So there you go. We are we're all done. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you've been watching this live, thank you very much for your um, company and for correcting me on a couple of little things that I made, uh, mistakes that I made, but I think we fixed everything along the way. Uh, big thank you to Queen Games, especially Ulrich, for helping out with the rules and stuff, uh, for sponsoring these videos. This is game two in the Steppenfeld City Collection. Um, I've done a how to play video for Hamburg and a solo playthrough for Hamburg. I've done the how to play video for Amsterdam, which is live on the channel now. Uh, and I've done the solo playthrough. And starting next week, I'm going to be working on the how to play video for New York City. That's, uh, yeah, I'm going to start working on that next week. But for now, we are all done. Thank you very much for watching. Give the video a like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, and if you are in a position to be able to support me on Patreon, I do rely on the support of the Patreon to keep the channel going. Patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Patreon supporters get exclusive access to the Slack channel, behind the scenes videos, and lots of other things. Um, but yeah, I'm going to disappear now and have a drink and a lie down. I might have some schnapps. Take care, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>